Hello, Greg Pascal here with Crafts of Testing. I've got another great tip for you today. Uh, I want to talk about something that most automation engineers um, stumble upon at some point in time, but it's usually later on in their career as an automation engineer. And I refer to this as an automation evaluation. And I want to talk to you about the tips that I've found that really lead to successful automation and picking the right things. So today let's talk about that and how you go ahead and do an automation evaluation and how that will help you um, ensure you're automating the right things, okay? So let's jump on in. Now there's a problem we all encounter uh, and the reality is that not all tests, manual or automated, really bring the same value. Some apps um, are reliable and some are not. And so whether you are in a place uh, of the maturity of the application that it's ready to automate is a really important skill that you derive. Um, and another important part is that not all testing reduces risk, especially if the testing isn't mature yet. So uh, just because we go through the motions of what looks like testing doesn't necessarily mean we're testing a whole lot. It's a reality that there is. Um, I've written some papers on this concept. Um, I call it the testing grand illusion, and um, it can affect anybody at all. Also, the reality is that automation is very expensive to write. When you think about automating something that interacts with an application, you know, authenticates in, starts to interact with fields, maybe you have to deal with iframes and other things, you begin to spend maybe hours on a single automated test. And so before you spend that time on it, it's really important that you consider, is this a good candidate to begin with? Is this application mature enough for me to go forward with it? So I want you to invest in these small little tools, these small tips I'm about to share with you. Um, and it will allow you to build things that are maintainable in the long run, that um, are the right time uh, to go ahead and build them, and are going to really give you the benefits over the, over the long term. So let's, let's kick it off. Let's talk about what are the steps of an automation evaluation. Well, the very first one I always look for is, is the test case documented? Now, I know some of you are probably rolling your eyes. You're like, documentation? Really? But yeah, it's important that you document a test case. And really, your manual test engineer should own that test case. And they should be the ones that come to you and say, you know what? I have this test case. It's solid. I think this is going to be a useful tool in my tool belt. Automation engineer, would you automate this for me? Let's face it, in some cases, the manual test engineer is also the automation engineer. So if that's you, you need to ensure that the thing that you're about to automate really brings value and that it's the right time to do it. Another important step is you need to determine, is the functionality I'm testing critical, high, medium, or low? Now, any of you that are familiar with my METS testing approach, and you can learn about this at METSTesting.com. You'll find a link to it uh, below in this channel. Um, any of you that have experienced or been exposed to the idea of METS testing know that we break test cases up by critical, high, medium, and low. We evaluate where do they fit in that. And for our team, we look at automating the critical tests. Generally, those get automated especially once they're mature enough where they're not changing and we're having to maintain a bunch of stuff all the time. So you're looking for things like that. Again, if you want to learn more about that, go to metstesting.com. I just released a great Udemy class on this. It's usually for sale for, you know, maybe 10 or 20 bucks out there. Uh, and it'll be worth the time uh, you invest in it. Another important part is has testability been built into the app? Now, what's testability? Testability just simply means that the things that help you identify locators are embedded well within the application. So if you're interacting with, uh, let's say, a link, or you're interacting with uh, a field or a button, that a good ID tag has been attached to it or something that lets you uh, 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 identify that object really, really well, and not something that requires you to use a, a contains text usage in your um, in your automation or your XPath. Uh, I prefer to not use class if at all possible because the look and feel is what's going to likely change more than anything. So I tend to stay away from that. Look for good testability. And if you get a chance, talk to your devs early on and share with them the importance of them building in good ID tags into the application ahead of time that they think about like, yeah, this button is the submit button or, you know, the 
the go button or the login button or whatever, and that they give a great ID tag in there that's going to stay stable regardless of what you call the button over the long term, um, you know, from a user perspective. So I look for those good locators. Um, and again, that's a great time to chat with the devs. Um, here's an important one. Is the application feature stable enough? Uh, there are some beliefs out there to automate every single test case you can. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really not of the full belief of that, but the, the time to really not do that is when a brand new feature gets rolled out and it's still not solid, it's not stable, um, and uh, you're still kind of deciding on what the final look of the application is going to be. So um, don't automate during discovery work. If you're in a DevOps model, this is not the time to automate something unless you've just got a, endless hours to burn uh, and, um, you know, you got a bunch of automation engineers sitting around twiddling their thumbs. That's going to be the most expensive automation you write, and it's likely not going to return any return on investment. So take the time to, to do it when it's the right time. Really look for that feature to get stable, and at that point in time, then go and automate it and get it in great shape so you can add it to your test suite and have it going forward. When you, when you have a lot of excessive maintenance and automation, it's really easy to lose the return on investment or ROI as we often refer to it. So again, the timing of this, look for that feature to become stable. And you know what? Don't underestimate the value of a manual uh, execution of the test case. Manual testing is extremely valuable. Uh, in a way, I believe manual testing is, probably finds a lot more than automated testing because of two very important things. We have a uh, vision to look at an application and we have our brain to consider, is this make sense the way I'm using it? See, automation is still pretty dumb. Even with all the talk of AI and all that, it's not all that smart, really. That's a great selling gimmick, but that's still not gonna be as, as, as excellent as a human will be at perceiving the application and what it's doing. So uh, don't underestimate the value of executing manually. It's still an extremely powerful thing. So much so that when I build test automation, I build it for my manual test engineers. It's a tool that I put in their tool belt. And I say, here, here's another tool that will help you evaluate. I love when our, our manual test engineers watch the automation execute. They're able to spot things the automation blows right past. So while I'm passionate, I love automation. I know where its weaknesses are and where its strengths are, and that's that's important for you to get your arms around as well. Also, consider the cost of maintaining what you're building. Uh, it's crazy if you build automation that's more complex than the very feature it's testing. Uh, that takes some discernment and real skill and wisdom to know uh, when you should automate and when something's going to be, you know, this complex monstrosity that's going to be so complex that it's likely to fail and it would just be easier for a human to manually test this thing. So look for that sort of thing and make sure it's, it's worthwhile. Um, a common mistake that's made with automation is that when it's built, people often forget that they've got to maintain it. Uh, you'll, you'll notice this when uh, teams talk about automating everything. Lots of times that's a very immature and young team that hasn't really experienced having automation for years and years and years and realizing there's a lot of maintenance involved when you build automation. So uh, if, if you hear your product lead or those that are encouraging you to do it uh, uh, with this mindset that once we build it, we're good, we have it, then, then you probably need to at least have a reality check with them and say, look, as soon as I build this, I now need to keep maintaining it. And so um, are you sure you want to allocate me to do that all the time? Uh, could I also maybe be more useful in the manual testing at this point in time and wait till this feature is more stable before I jump on in and do it? So after you go through these basic variations, by the way, you'll probably have some others. These are just some fundamental ones that I teach my team to use so that we ensure we're automating the right things at the right time. These tips are really going to help you. So put them in your toolbox, make a list of them, if you will, and pull them out every time you're asked to automate something to go through the evaluation process. So remember, at the end of this, apply your automation evaluation uh, every time you're asked to consider uh, should you automate. Do it wisely. Ensure that the right tests and priorities and locators 
all the expectations of what people think as they're asking you to write, that automation are in place. Um, and set the expectation that maintenance is going to be required. So build that in early on that once I build this, I'm going to need to maintain it. So I want to leave you with these parting thoughts. Pursue the craft of testing well. This is an awesome career to be in. The, the, the career of test automation, manual testing, leading teams, like uh, introducing uh, a testing culture into your company. It's a worthy career and a worthy thing to pursue. This tip on automation evaluations is really going to be a tip to help you grow and mature in your craft. So please pass this on to other test automation engineers, teams that are starting off so they have great tools like this in place. I'll talk to you later. It's been great spending this evening with you as, I, as we do yet one more podcast. Thank you again. This is Greg Pascal with Crafts of Testing, and I'll see you the next go round. Bye-bye now. I would love to connect with you, so feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'm very easy to find at Greg Pascal on LinkedIn. For those of you who are in the automation world, take a look at my book, Test Automation in the Real World. You can find more about that at realworldtestautomation.com.